And this is the skunky cage that Punim, Brew and Kinney were in last year. So we're just doing some maintenance on the cage before Roddy, Cappy, Geo and Daisy May can move in. So Innocent's just preparing the cage and putting some chicken wire onto the airlock as well because if mums and babies go out into the airlock then babies can still escape if they're really tiny ones so we want to make sure that everything is secure for them. So we're just getting the skunky introduction cage ready for the new babies to go in so four will be going down there and uh, here is looks like Kinney and then Brew in the trees, last season's orphans. They're really enjoying the vegetation and the leaves and grasses that the rains have brought. On the right sat down there we've got Spock, he's an older boy. And then just coming into focus will be Button there and then Renee from a couple of years ago. That's Renee. Teddy just walking past in the background. Renee just come down to see rocks. Who have you got there, Connie? So we've got Cappy here and Roddy just getting ready for their trip down to Skunky where they're going to start meeting some monkeys through the fence. And we've got Daisy May and Geo coming to join them. So here. Daisy May on the right and then Geo on the left. Coming with with Ellie and Jamie. One. Yeah, because it's just for the walk down. They're all friends. <laughs> Seems they don't want to go, they don't know how exciting it's going to be. Okay, yeah. Should we put you for a cuddle with Daisy May? Hmm? Yes, you like her, don't you? There you go. Good boy. It will be Geo's first ever time down there. So the other three have been, Roddy and Cappy have been few times, Daisy May has been, but yeah, Geo's first time, but he's super interested in bandits and the monkey mums and everything, so I think he'll do really well. Okay. Actually, we should probably just take the whole box, because we're just leaving all the old stuff here. The babies you heard screaming were Minnie Max and Finley, and there's Intern Corentin just calming them down. They're all good, but they were the two you could hear in the background. So whilst the other babies are moving to Skunky, then we've got volunteer Lucas from France who's looking after Oswald. Um, Oswald will have some friends and he'll be with Minnie, Max and Finley. We've also still got Edson and Terry left as well. Thanks Lucas! So there's volunteer manager Ellie, previous baby mum, Connie, baby mum, Jamie, integration staff, ready to transport them all down to Skunky Troop. Always an exciting part when we can get the next stage of the rehabilitation process going.
Okay, ready? Let's go. So there's Scro on the right. They got a lot of monkeys in a Scro troop. And then we've got just down there are the Robert intro cages where the monkeys from Johannesburg Wildlife Vets are. Brenda K, Peanut, Lola and Co. And then we're going past Robert Troop and then we will be turning left past the Volunteer Village and then down to Skunky Troop. It's 35 degree day today. So it's going to be another hot one, but we're just really pleased that this year we've got some vegetation. It does help to cool it down and of course give lots of food for the monkeys. And there just on the right is the Samango enclosure where last year's orphan Nino was introduced. There's the volunteer village. Here, Steve. Mark doing a few finishing touches. How's the cage looking, Mark? Very shiny. <laughs> it is very shiny. But uh, we just need to put the ball over in. Uh, but it'll be okay for today. So they've got brand new chicken wire all around this uh, cage, which SD and Innocent and the team have been working on. Make sure that it's escape proof. We've got a couple of the skunky females waiting for the babies. Looks like, I can't even see actually, probably paradise and... Yeah. Do you see who it is, Mark? Pom. Oh yeah, probably Pom as well, her daughter. Yes, paradise and Pom, there's paradise. The alpha females. Sleepy. Yeah, all on me. Every one of them. <laughs> Is that excitement or fear, kids? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. So we're down at Skunky, we've just moved the babies down and I've just spotted Brew and Kenny, or Brew and Poonam, sorry. So that's Brew on the left playing with Poonam. Uh, so they're the orphans from last year who are doing really well. And they're sitting with Wahoo. And this male at the front now is Richard. 
I believe. And then we've also up here we've got uh, in the center now is um, Kinney. So he's the third of the orphans from last year. And we've also got Paradise. And then just below me we've got Button. Well, with all the little orphans coming in, we uh, had to find a spot for the um, bush babies just to get them orientated and make sure they uh, understood a little bit about life. And uh, unfortunately, the only place left was uh, Josie's spare room. Um, so she had to sacrifice that and uh, have these little guys living in there um, for a week or two. Uh, while they got used to um, jumping around, fending for themselves and, and starting to learn how to feed and catch insects. Uh, we weren't too sure how good they were at it because uh, they were kept uh, for pets for quite a long time. And uh, the reason they were handed over was that they started biting people. So they sort of jump on you and attack you. Um, not that they could ever kill you, but their bite is kind of bad. So um, we basically now set them up in, in, in a little room and uh, as you can see they're getting used to and orientating themselves climbing around and catching all the little moths and insects around the house which is kind of great in in a way um, the other thing is we had to set up some place that they could sleep in uh, yeah. which is very important so that they could get used to that um, so that once they uh, orientate themselves a little bit we can actually take the little sleeping um, house or the little place that they're sleeping in and move it uh, to a release area. Fortunately, we get uh, uh, the lesser bush baby on the foundation, so uh, we can release them here, which is great. But of course, we just got to make sure they understand uh, the ins and outs of life. So this is them just uh, taking advantage and, of course, uh, messing up <laughs> Josie's uh, room. Uh, I'm not going to say what it looked like after these little guys were finished in there, but uh, they, for such a small size, it's amazing what they can do. So the two bush babies have got just a makeshift home until they get their release cage. So they've got a little nesting box, which we're just teaching them about. Oh, they're teaching themselves about, should I say, they're just exploring and Hopefully you're going to find a place to sleep. And then this nest box will move into their release cage once they're settled. So it's just started to be the evening and this is where they basically will wake up now because they're nocturnal animals. And these are lesser bush babies. And they mainly hunt insects, so we'll also bring in insects in for them. Some flying termites and so on for them to eat. And they also do eat mealworms and some fruits as well. So we bring in fresh leaves to them every day. And some fruits. Try and find some indigenous fruits for them as well. They're quite shy animals. Even though they were kept as pets, they're still quite cautious of people, which is good because that's what we want for their rehabilitation. Well, this is a nice selection of uh, some natural um, vegetation that we brought in for them, some grasses, as well as uh, some of our local fruits for them to eat. But of course, uh, as you can see, the mealworms uh, were the best thing out there, and that's what they were digging around for, um, trying to find the little mealworms and eat those, um, which is uh, a good thing, because at least it represents some of the worms and stuff like they might find out um, in the release area, although we are interested that they, they start catching um, flying ants and this type of things and eating moths. Uh, they probably were used to mealworms because that would have been part of the diet uh, that they would have been fed um, as pets, so it's not surprising that they, that they do like them. But of course we've got to now try and get them to eat other types of insects as well and also get the taste for other types of insects, so mealworms might 
taste slightly differently because they're also artificially fed um, on oats and grains and stuff like this. It's not quite the same as what their natural diet would have been. Luckily, we were getting rains and there was a lot of flying ants and things like this around. So we could uh, catch some of those and provide them with flying ants, uh, which was also helping them get used to eating something else. Kyrie and Donna, the two bush babies, this is their sleeping place in a room at the moment until the cage is built and they finally for the first time today started using their nest which is great. As you can see at the moment it's attached to a curtain pole which is just temporary. But we're hoping to move this nest box to the new area up near quarantine. So they can start getting used to it now and then they've still got something the same when they move across. So there's Kyrie on the left and Donna just popped out the hole there. one's Donna. Donna's much more nervous of people. So we have to film her from a distance. Okay. So I've just put some gum special gum um, for bush babies or usually for exotics but obviously we don't want bush babies becoming pets in any way so we've just made up this gum mix from a powder and put it on some branches so that they get used to finding gums on trees because some of their diet does consist of these gums that are in trees too so first of all they did take it from a pot because they're used to having things in dishes and then now I've put some on the branch to see if they'll actually eat it off the branch rather than just the pot. They absolutely love their mealworms. They're just looking for the last of those now. The lesser bush baby's diet is said to be about 70% mainly insects, and then the other 30% is made up of fruits, oh, possibly fruits, um, vegetation, and gums. Daisy Maze is.
Oh, it's paradise and palm. So paradise is the alpha female. And palms are. So paradise is looking very interested and pleased that there's babies once again. Do you grab the water bowl? That's Pom just walking by and then Paradise is being groomed. Okay, Look. are we all a bit nervous so no one wants to leave, huh? You Looks are. like Poonam's there on the right. Honestly, at this point, it's like, oh, someone's feet on me. Geo Geo got a bit of a fright there. He's fighting, huh? There we go. Lovely, I promise. She just got very excited. Down here watching now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good, we'll give you a few more next year, eh, Paradise? Get all of them. Just get every baby to skunking. One per mum. <laughs> Dirty butt. No, not here. Okay, good. <laughs> Here's Renee and Rocky coming for a visit. So Renee is That's an awesome. orphan from <laughs> two years ago. His first job when he's in quarantine while he's here is making loads of bottle holders. Yeah, actually the annoying thing is Skunky is the only one who doesn't have any one. Here's Martha with Gio. We've got Max and oh, Button running over, and Renee. Has Spox come up to say hello? He's one of our older boys in the group. Ethan was very interested when we brought Roddy and Cappy down. Was he? I'm surprised Button's not been by yet. I saw Button just <laughs> over there in the troop. But we don't mind if Paradise and Pond with the Elfers want to <laughs> take yeah. take care of them. As long as Paradise doesn't stay in too long because she's the Alpha female. But I'm sure Daisy May is an Alpha baby. Mm -hmm. You hear that Daisy May? <laughs> uh, who's coming now? Mags, I think. Yes. Mags. And Spock again. Mags is saying hello. <laughs> hello. So Esty's busy fixing up some wiring for a camera. So hopefully some of you guys will be able to see when they get foster mums and we can actually put it on video for you. So that's quite exciting. We've not had one down here at Skunky before. Mm. 
Daisy May is our first intro cage, um, feeding cage user. Well, no drinking, but that's fine. Getting used to the smaller holes. <laughs> and Mark here still working on some bottle holders. <laughs> Three. Three. Well, isn't that the face of a little angel? Little Edson, quite content, trusting his caregiver. Little belly is full, and uh, he just looks so pleased with himself. And uh, he's probably very happy now that he's got a secure home, and uh, he's possibly found love again by a whole lot of other monkeys that care for him, and uh, he's well on his way to recovery. Well, here we have little Terry checking up on Edson. <laughs> Don't know if it's so much checking up or saying to him, hey, come on, it's time to get up and play. Um, we've got to get some exercise around this place. We can't sleep the whole day. Um, so Terry's eager to jump around and explore. But it looks like little Edson, he's just happy resting there. He says, look, another five minutes. I don't really want to get up now. But uh, Terry's like sort of not having any of this. He's just saying, come on, boy, time to get up. Let's get around this place. Can't sleep here forever. Uh, <laughs> so giving him a friendly bite there on the ear. And uh, yeah, but at least you can see they're looking very good at the moment. They're coming on very nicely. Eyes are all bright and shiny, which is very important. So uh, of these two are drinking very well and they should be moving over to uh, the Disneyland enclosure and uh, soon to meet uh, some of the other monkeys and that's uh, just giving him a little bit of uh, something else to choose so he doesn't uh, get latched onto poor Edson's ear because uh, also it's not a very good thing for that to happen so just give him something else to uh, chew on in the meantime until we can get uh, Edson up and running about Well, these two are very tiny actually and uh, doing a little bit of uh, investigation, getting their hands uh, and leg coordination going. This is uh, little Terry here, a little bit more in the front near the stick and Edson uh, at the back. And uh, yeah, they're just exploring and having a look and getting used to their hands and feet and what's around them. So it's also quite an exciting part to see how they grow and how they find things at this age and uh, how quickly they actually uh, get to climb and start moving around um, is quite something. Okay, so it's actually Minimax's first ever bath. And he has had a little one before. Just get you soapy first, huh? Okay, you can hold on actually, that's fine. Yeah, you can hold on. So we start with the body. Mm -hmm. 
Obviously, the butt <laughs> is one of the dirty areas. So you want to make sure it's all nice and clean. I know, sweetie. I know, it's not fun, is it? If there's any particularly like stubborn bits of dirt, like on his leg here, mm -hmm. you can sort of groom it out. Or give it. I know, I'm so sorry, Angel. Here, hold on. There you go. Okay. Also, venting of comfort at the same time. I know. I know, it's no fun. You do. That's such an unimpressed little face you just made at me. No, I know, I know. He's really not too bad. No. Just the base of his tail. Come with us. <laughs> and then you want to be a bit more careful, obviously, with the head. Just a little bit over his hair. I know, I know. It's no fun. I'm just going to give your nose a look. And then the rinse, we want to get all the soap off, there we go. I know, you're like, get me away from this horrible lady, it's getting me all wet. So yeah, we want to get all of the soap off so that it's not going to irritate his skin. One hand at a time. And now you sit on this side. We'll do this one. And then I need to do your face. He looks even smaller. Yeah. <laughs> he looks so tiny. All his fluff is gone. Yeah. And again, just making sure that water isn't going to go in his face and up his nose. Yeah. Right there. I know, come on, let's put you straight down here. Yeah, is that better? Becky and Mark are doing a wonderful job sorting out mealworms. <laughs> we have to separate the beetles and the mealworms and so on. Um, we got these mealworms for the bush babies that were handed to us and now um, we're also going to give to some of the sick monkeys and the intracages for some extra protein for them. Thanks guys. <laughs> well this is Murray and you can see he's just uh as happy as anything getting all of these mealworms probably far more than it actually needed so uh, he's probably as happy as anything and uh, they really enjoy them and as uh, Joe said it's uh, good and good extra protein especially for those that are feeling a little bit down um, just to get them that little bit extra kick uh, for the day so uh, he's very happy with these So today the bush babies have caught a really big moth. And it's great that they're actually using their hunting skills now. It's the next step for their rehabilitation. So we've got a few moths that are flying around the room which they've been catching. Another interesting thing about bush babies is that they urinate on their hands, like you can see they're doing over there, and uh, this helps them with holding on to the branches and stuff when they're jumping around on all the trees and things like this, and probably also spreads a little bit of their mark so others uh, know who's in the area. Uh, 
the nice thing is that these uh, two little ones have got used to this nest box and uh, calling it their home so they're quite comfortable uh, going in and out and uh, which is the essential part in the end of the day because once they're used to that we can move this little nest box um, to the release site or the release area and place it in a nice position and then of course when we open it um, they'll still have their little home and they can get used to the place where they need to go back to uh, so they'll go into a special area that we've got where they can uh, basically be safe from any other predators and get used to the predators and the sounds of the area and then we'll of course let them go further and uh, they can enjoy some of the bigger trees and the bigger areas on the foundation. So we just made up some gum and put it on the branches here which is just to encourage them to find the gum in the wild off the trees as well. So just put it all the way up there. In the hope that they will find it. They just had some tasty beetles as well. They managed to catch the beetles themselves. So they're really doing very well, Kyrie and Donna. One of them's found it. They need to be able to not just hunt, but to also find the gums and things on the branches when they go into the wild. So it's another accomplishment for them today. So Donna is the one on the right, and Kyrie, well, Kyrie's now on the right, <laughs> Donna's on the left. Well, even the bandits are kind of interested in what's going on in Disneyland and uh, yeah, we have a little family um, come to have a look and see how things are going uh, hopefully to show the little uh, orphans uh, how a little baby monkey should behave and uh, show them a little bit about what uh, monkey life is all about Well, this is always a fun part to watch. Uh, here we have uh, Roddy, Cappy and Daisy, Daisy May uh, learning how to use uh, the feeding cage. So this is a very important step in their whole progress. Um, just being able to get in and out of it. So at the moment you can see the back of it isn't closed so they don't feel claustrophobic or worry about getting in or out. So they could actually walk out of the back there. There's even a food bowl there for them. Uh, but at least they're enjoying going in and out um, of the little hole. So uh, that is an important part of the whole process. <laughs> so to them at the moment this is uh, fun and games. But of course to us it's uh, a life skill because if they don't learn to go in and out of this little cage they can't get a foster mom. So this is really the whole beginning stage to everything. So we try and encourage them in every way we can 
um, to come in and out of this little cage and get so used to it um, that they're not scared of it or anything like that. So as uh, people that have previously watched the program, these get placed around the natural enclosure and also in the introduction cage as they're getting introduced to moms. So once they get introduced to a mother, uh, we have to watch to see that they're climbing off mom, going into this cage easy enough. The mothers are getting fairly used to it, or the adoptive moms are getting used to um, letting them climb off, off them because they've uh, been through this whole process before. Some of them do get a little bit of pos possessive, so that can be a bit troubling. But in most cases, the little orphans are used to climbing off, and uh, then they learn to go in and out of this cage, which is very, very important for their progress. So these guys are doing pretty well at the moment. And uh, you guys thought Michael Jackson had some moves. Well, he's got nothing on this little one. Well, as you can see, Disneyland is set up in such a way that there is small little branches and things for these guys to climb around in and uh, just get used to climbing up and down trees because uh, unfortunately we can't have anything, uh, have them out on the outside um, because they can quite climb quite high uh, and escape from you. So we have to have them in a secure environment while they're learning all the pros and cons of climbing and getting around and they really do seem to be having a lot of fun having a look at the other monkeys around in the in the outside and uh, sort of getting all their hands and feet coordinated and getting used to uh, climbing up and down the trees. See some of them have been having a little bit too much fun and starting to get a little bit tired and weary. So uh, it doesn't take too long and, and they need to have a little bit of a nap. And sometimes it doesn't really matter <laughs> where. I mean, look, look at this one just on a tree branch, which is good, I suppose, because monkeys do sleep in the trees. So uh, they are fortunate they can almost sleep uh, anywhere, not like us that has to have a comfortable bed. Yeah, you just park off in a tree, fall asleep, and uh, that'll do. Well, at least they haven't forgotten their little friend, Finley. Uh, he probably really wants to go out and join them, but uh, we're still waiting for his uh, little tail to mend uh, properly before he can go out there. But uh, at least they come over and say hello and, and see how he's doing. And uh, I think he maybe understands that uh, he needs a little bit of time. He is kind of tiny in comparison compared to them. But of course he does have little mini Max. He's the one with the pin in his leg. And uh, the two of them are keeping each other company. they call the tinies at the moment because they're a lot tinier than the others. You can see also their faces are very, very pink. And uh, slowly little mini Max's uh, leg is healing. And hopefully it won't be long that he can... Uh, they can both actually go out and join the others. I suppose it's like uh, any family really um, when you just had a rough day you've been playing the whole day and you just want to get a little bit of uh, shut eye and find a nice little place to curl up in and trying to be peaceful and quiet and uh, as uh, any typical family or adoptive family 
your uh, brother and sister, um, they still want to carry on playing. So, of course, you just know you're not going to get any sleep. doesn't matter how hard you try. And uh, that seems to be the problem here with little uh, Oswald. Um, he's had enough. He just wants to rest and sleep. And, of course, we've got uh, Daisy May and Roddy jumping around like crazy, um, still full of life. Some natural forage is of course a very good thing. Um, some of these monkeys have never come across got grass yet in their little lives, so it is a, a new experience. So it's just nice for them to get used to the different textures and things like this because it is something they would eat, eat naturally, especially the little bottom section of it is uh, quite nutritious and juicy. And uh, so this is just them learning a little bit about the natural grasses in the area playing in it, some of them chewing it and tasting it and seeing what it's like and uh, so at least it won't be so frightening when they do come across it um, outside of their learning pen. Well, over to Neverland, and uh, here we got little Terry um, enjoying a little piece of apple. Uh, as these guys are going through uh, a teething phase, these things do help just get the gums going a little bit better. So about after nine days or so that the little teeth start appearing, and of course like any baby it, it does give them a little bit of trouble. So it's nice to uh, suck and chew on something, it just like makes it feel a lot better. And of course that's what uh, little Terry is doing here at the moment. These are really the smallest ones uh, around here that we have at the moment and uh, they are doing extremely well um, teaching each other to go in the feeding cage and drink milk and things like this on their own is very good so as you can see it's all about the orientation just get used to it not being scared of it not being scared of climbing in and out the holes and if it becomes like something that they uh, find as a kind of jungle gym or something to play on it becomes less scary and scarier um, as time goes on so it's easier for them to go in and out and uh, that's the important important part of the whole exercise so everything that we're trying to do so far in the shortest space of time is just to get these little guys to learn to drink from the milk bottle go in and out of this feeding cage without a problem and get used to climbing off whether it's a human or a monkey to go inside to feed themselves and uh, once they've mastered that little act 
we can get them over to uh, a foster mom and she can start looking after them. Um, we do have to also just have a little bit of time there. It's normally about three months of age that uh, we can let the foster mom go out with the monkey, but it also just depends on their progress uh, because after three months, the little ones start climbing off their mom a lot sooner. So they don't, uh, up until three months, they'll cling on to mom, they won't go anywhere. And uh, that's normally the problem with the feeding cage because the mom won't let the little one go and drink and she keeps holding on to them and uh, then we can have a little bit of a problem. But after three months of age, the little one doesn't want to cling on to mom anymore, wants to climb off and uh, explore a little bit and that's sort of the best time uh, to, because then they are uh, going to go feed themselves in a feeding cage and things like this without a problem. Well, with Mini Max and Oswald eating uh, from the feeding cage, uh, that brings the, us to the end of this episode. Um, but just like to say a very big thank you to our volunteers that have left behind you. With South Africa going back onto the red list in most countries, uh, we haven't got the volunteer numbers coming through that we actually needed to look after all these little guys. So everybody that's here is putting in extra hours, working long days from 5 o'clock in the morning to very late at night just to make sure that these little guys get that second chance in life that they really deserve. Thank you also to everybody out there for uh, watching our channel, for becoming members, uh, for sharing it with your friends, promoting us where you can, watching the adverts, um, joining our uh, Patreon, our Instagram, um, also our Facebook pages, just getting a lot more interested for the people that are donating. Uh, continually dating uh, via PayPal and things like that. That's what's helping us uh, exist at the moment. So thank you for all of you out there. Keep on doing it. Keep on pushing it. We need all the help we can get through this very tough Christmas period. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Lucas doing the finishing touches to the sick bay roof. It's had whole new struts put in. It's had all the holes fixed. And now it's being painted. The last piece of the puzzle. We're very excited. Sick Bay's had its facelift and it looks fat.